on a previous video series entitled Comparison of Info, I started to go into a talk about Ephraim and Manasseh. And because the information is so deep, uh, it's a never-ending trail of supportive evidence that just does not stop. So I decided to go into another series. I've been compiling information here for a little more than two days. And I probably got about another 10, 15 days that I could go. And I just decided that, you know, once I show you what I'm going to show you, you know, of course, there'll be some people that just flat out accuse me. They don't, they don't follow anything up and don't look into the depth of anything. And their first reaction is just to accuse, just to accuse. Hey, if I don't know it and it, it sounds strange to what traditional interpretation I've been given, well, I'm going to accuse this guy. You know, that's ignorance, okay? Be ignorant if you want. But for everybody else, there is a never-ending trail of supportive evidence that you yourself can use and find to back up what we're going to talk about here in this series. So we're talking about Ephraim and Manasseh. And there is some major, major confusion concerning the understanding of the 12 tribes, their roles in the last day. And what we're going to really have to do is we're going to have to go to the beginning once again. And we're going to go to Genesis. As we look into Genesis here, we're going to be looking at chapter 48 and chapter 49. The first thing I want to show you is chapter 49, and it's going to be the basis for the understanding of what I've been talking about. I've been talking about that there is two versions of deity that we're experiencing in the Hebrew Bible. One is the father of all that is, represented by the true manifestation of his presence as Jesus Christ. The other is the fallen prince of this world, of which Jesus Christ himself has talked about as he's seen him fall from heaven like lightning. Now that fallen prince of this world is a part of a trinity faction also. Now remember, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, that's the trinity. They try to manifest themselves in the same way that the father manifests himself. So the father represents himself as the supreme trinity of the father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, so too is there a triune manifestation on the wicked side, and that would be Lucifer, the light bearer, and then Satan and the devil. And of course, that's LSD, which for some of you know is a hallucinogenic, which is an illusion, which is a part of the fractal. Lucifer, Satan, and devil are the illusion. They're a part of the fractal. So with that being said, they try to mirror everything. They're trying to mirror the spiritual hierarchy. They're trying to mirror the way that things are done in the spiritual world. They themselves come from the spiritual world. They're not rejecting what they are, and that's the spirit. What they're doing is they're rejecting the over-control of the spirit, and that's the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. They reject that. And that's why you will see them acknowledge Jesus Christ, but they want to acknowledge him as the true and living Son of God. They pretty much put themselves right on par with Jesus Christ. They think, they think that they're equals and that Jesus himself is just trying to flex muscle over them and keep them down. All right? That's a little bit of the summary of why there's been this war in heaven and why they've rebelled. They reject the authority of Jesus Christ as it's held up by the Father in paradise. And furthermore, they actually reject the validity of the Father's presence in paradise. They say the Father don't exist. That that is just a, cr a created distraction which has been created by Jesus Christ, the Most Highs, and the Ancient of Days. Now for some of you that's going to sound strange because I just separated the Most High and put them as plural. And then I separated the Ancient of Days, which most of you would equate as Jesus. Well, there are three separate spiritual factions that are all working for the same goal and they're all under the dominion of Jesus Christ. But nonetheless, this rebellion has taken place and the objective of the rebellion is to remove Jesus Christ as the ruler of this universe. I'll be back.